Hi there and welcome back to Dragonfall. I'm Baron and well the last run really went to hell in a head handbasket and we just barely escaped with our lives. We lost our team leader and um, yeah now we are in our safe house I guess. And the Shadowrunners will have to discuss what to do now. Apparently the, the last one was a trap. That much is obvious. Uh, it was a setup to kill our Decker, and um, somebody knew that Anya was going to be a part of the group as well. You step inside, and the square of the disused U-Bahn tunnel um, gives way to the warmth of your safe house. A man waits inside, silhouetted against the dim fluorescent lightning, lighting. Something bad has happened, has it? Paul Amsel. He steps forward, revealing a pale and expressionless face, light glinting off of steel rimless glasses. Gl steel rimmed glasses. Paul Amsel, your team's fixer and landlord, part deal maker, part information broker, one of the most well connected men in Berlin. His eyes sweep across the team as he takes it all in the gr fake grim faces, the hard stares, Igor's fury. Monica's ab absence. I had a feeling. How did she? His face has gone ashen. He swallows, takes a moment to chew on the words before spitting them out. How did it happen? Something in the vault security system got her while she was checked in. It was over in an instant. I have seen Monica had black eyes before this. This was something worse. Glory nods. Her motions robotic and spare. Monica died of biofeedback induced stroke. That's right. Iger thrust the glove finger into your chest. And this idiot stood by and let it happen. Let it happen? She checked in. She screamed. She seized. By the time we saw uh, she was in trouble, it was already too late. Yeah, because you never bothered learning what to look for. Muscle contractions and micro tremors are good indicators of a dagger in distress. I'm assuming you didn't have anyone keeping an eye out for those? No, if you had, my friend wouldn't be lying dead in the basement. Oh, shove off, Igor. We were all on the lookout for physical security, Anya included. Throwing her under the bus isn't going to help anything. Under a bus is exactly where she belongs. Eiger turns to face Dietrich. She towers over him, but he stands his ground. I respect you, Dietrich. You know that. But you don't have my training. None of you have. Monica was good. She was the best, right? But she was also overconfident. She treated the job like it was a game. Do that long enough and you're gonna get burned. Eiger turns her fake focus back to you. If you'd been paying attention, you'd have figured all of this out on your own by now. You'd have known that Monica needed watching as much as that door. Enough, Iger. Amsel's voice is hoarse, his expression blank. Enough. Iger pushes ahead, heedless of the interruption. Her voice remains measured, but there's fire in her eyes. How many seconds passed between Monica's first convulsion and her get it pull luck getting pulled? Four? Five? Do you know how much damage Biofeedback can do to a dagger's brain in five seconds? Look, this won't... You don't have an answer to that, of course you know. No, you don't have to answer that, of course you know. Monica died while you stood there and watched. This is all your fault. I'm gonna shoot you in the head now. That is enough. Amsel's voice comes out in a roar and his fist smashes down on the desk behind him. Eager, Iger, you and Anya can have it out later. But I've had enough. We need to talk action. Our client sent you into something much bigger than he'd led us to believe. I want to know why. Right there with you. This was supposed to be a milk run. Payback isn't the only reason why we need to find him. We saw something back there. Something that we weren't supposed to see. It's fair to assume that we're all still in danger. He pauses, rubs his temples. Agreed. And to neutralize the danger we need to know who we are dealing with. Let us review the events that transpired tonight. The smallest detail could be important, so hold nothing back. M 
Monica lived long enough to say a name, Feuerschwinger. She fought hard to tell us. It must be important. Amsel seems taken aback. He pauses for a moment before responding. The Firewing? This is unexpected. You'll have to forgive me. This brings back many unpleasant memories. Glory raises an eyebrow. Firewing? The most terrible of the great dragons. There are those who would disagree, but they never experienced the terror of living in her shadow. He glances at Glory. You are far too young to remember her, of course, but for Germans of my generation, the name Feuerschwinge is synony synonymous with chaos, destruction, and death. The dragon of today are subtle creatures, full of patience and guile. Feuerschwinge was not. After her awakening, she went on a four-month rampage that claimed tens of thousands of lives. Amsel takes a deep breath, slowly releases it. There's a haunted look in his eyes. Those were dark days. Countless men, women and children were slaughtered, roasted alive in their homes by a creature of legend. No hope for salvation and no end in sight. It was a horror that you cannot begin to understand. Uh, I don't understand it. I mean, dragons are powerful creatures. But an automated machine gun, a few missiles should take care of it, really. I mean, this is still the 21st century. Humans should be able to fight anything. Hmm. Weird. What stopped her? I can't imagine, can't imagine that ramp a rampaging dragon would just go away on its own. Eventual, eventually, the firing was brought down by a man named Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Well, with the help of the Luftwaffe, of course. That's the German Air Force. But it was experimental weapons designed by Dr. Vauclair that finally pierced her hide. She fell in a hail of bullets and rocket fire and crashed down in the radioactive wasteland of the Sox. I have no clue what that it should be, the Sox. This event was called the Dragonfall. Safe at last from the dragon's wrath, Germany celebrated Vauclair as a hero, our own Siegfried, a modern day dragon slayer. My own family practically worshipped the man. If the Dragonfall was as important an event as you make it out to be, I'm surprised that I've never heard of it. Those early years of the awakening were traumatic, Igor. Not just on a national level, but on a global scale. New species of awakened animals were being discovered daily. Within two years of the Dragonfall, the active use of magic had returned to the world, a new source of terror for a bewildered public. And in 2021, the sudden emergence of orcs and trolls gave rise to yet another wave of global panic. In light of such turmoil, it is it any surprise that Dr. Vauclair and the Firewing were forgotten? Dragons were yesterday's news. He rubs his temples. Again, all of this happened decades ago. To the best of my knowledge, the story of Feuerschwinger is a bit of historical trivia and nothing more. Alright, so Monica spent a dying breath trying to tell us about a long dead dragon. Iga sweeps her eyes across the group, searching for a glimmer of insight. Finally, she gives up. Any ideas to, as to why? Amsel's voice trembles with frustration. No. It doesn't make any more sense to me than it does to you. The dragon is ancient history. Feuerschwinger has been dead and gone for 42 years. But there's one thing that I do know. Whatever Monica saw, whatever she was trying to tell us, it was important. He visibly struggles to calm himself, takes a deep breath and slowly releases it. I will look into this and I will find answers. In the meantime, did you turn up anything else of value? After everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military-grade armor. He appeared to be the head of security. This is not much to go on. Do any details about this orc come to mind? Any distinguishing features that I could look into? He was an older guy for one. From the sound of his voice, I'm guessing mid to late forties, pretty old for an orc. And he had skin grafts. Most of his face looked like replacement material. If the grafts came from a legitimate, legi legitimate hospital, there may be medical records. That is something. I will see what I can find out. Did you note anything else during the run that may be of value? Well, the estate was just a front for whatever was going on in, on the, in the basement. Amazon nods. That much is clear. It wasn't a minor enterprise either. The facility took serious funds to build. 
and time, there was more to it than we saw. Places like that don't spring up overnight. And all in secret, I doubt that the owners, whoever they may be, are too pleased by your escape. What else did you find? That's all we've got. That's not much. Amsel nods, his face is drawn and haggard. It is thin, I agree, a basement, a middle-aged orc with skin graft and a long-forgotten world event. Wait, we're still missing something. Who paid for this run? Amsel looks pained. I do know I do not know his exact identity. I did not set up the run. Monica did. His face reddens. I I warned her. I told her not to take the job, but she assured me that it would be a cakewalk. Monica was approached recently by a man who calls himself Green Winters. He used to be a prominent activist in the F state political scene. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I never much liked him and I certainly never trusted him. But Monica, she would do anything for her cause. Oh, flux state. Anything for the flux state, he sighs. Winter swore that the data he was after was crucial to ensuring the future stability of the flux. What the fuck is the flux? And that was all it took. It sounds like Green Winters is our best lead then. Yes, most definitely. It is clear that Green Winters has involved us in something much larger than he led Monica to believe. When he finds out what happened on the run, he's probably gonna rabbit. it. We need to chase him down before that happens. So we need information on Green Winters and we need it fast. There's a man here in Kreuzbazar, a Turk named Altuk Burakazi. He owns a very little soy calf shop just down the way called Cafe Ketzfe. I have no idea how to pronounce that. This man is also a purveyor of information. I have done business with him from time to time. And you think he would know something about Green Winters? Amsel nods. When I discovered Monica's renewed association with Green Winters, I contacted Altuk. One of his people has been keeping tabs on Winters ever since. As I said, I did not trust the man. For good reason, it would seem. I'll talk to Altuk and see what he knows about Green Winters. Very well. Tell him I sent you. I will do what I can to dig into the information that you've uncovered already, sparse though it may be. And we've gained five karma points. Okay. And the game saved apparently. That's nice. Um, okay, 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 we don't really have much equipment wise. I'm gonna increase dodge. And that's it for now. Anya. Ams appears at you through a battered pair of wire-rimmed glasses. His eyes are bloodshot, his expression is grim. Did you get information about Green Winters? No, not yet. Then please continue working. We need to find that man. Okay. Let's talk to Dietrich. Dietrich turns his head at you, at your approach. His aging face is traced with a network of faint scars, the legacy of too many fights over too many years. While he still retains a degree of strength and vigor, it's obvious that the shaman you see today is a shadow of his former self. Despite all of this, there is still an aura of power surrounding the man. He raises his bottle, offering it to you. Anya, welcome. I've got a bottle of schnapps, that's like strong liquor, whiskey and stuff. That needs sharing, and we've got a fallen comrade to drink to. To Monica. Prost. That's like... Skull. <laughs> the liquor in the bottle is crystal clear, and as you raise it to catch an intoxicating whiff of gloves and caramel. As you raise it, you catch an intoxicating whiff of gloves and caramel. Cloves is, is... No, that's not that. That would be garlic. 
What is cloves? I have no clue. It tastes of sweet corn and walnuts with the lingering aftertaste of buttery toffee. You swallow a swig, then return the bottle to Dietrich's outstretched hand. He takes a long pull from the bottle and locks eyes with you. Let me ask you a question, Anya. What made you choose to come to Berlin? Why do you want to know? Monika told me that you moved here from the Rhine Ruhr Megaplex. Made it sound like you've, you'd been there for a good many years, successful years at that. Leads a man to wonder why you packed up and moved here. I just had to drop out of sight for a while. Sure enough, I think that most of the team is here to hide from something. Not me, of course. Given the choice between hiding from something and punching, it's smack in the nose, you know which direction I tend to lead. But most of the others, yeah, even Iger's hiding out from something. Really? How do you know? Intuition. Got a nose for damaged people. Cause I've spent most of my life running with and playing for folks who were damaged in one way or another. So that might have something to do with it. So things got heavy back in the Ruhrplex. You decided to bail out, uh, head to Berlin. I'm getting that right. More or less, there wasn't much left for me to do in, in the Ruhrplex, and Monica made a hell of an, made a hell of an offer. Ah, yes, Monica. Dietrich raises his bottle again, then closes his eyes and takes a long drink. After a moment, he passed. After a moment has passed, he returns his attention to you. It all comes back to our girl, doesn't it? So let me ask you. Just what was your relationship with Monica anyway? I know that you two knew each other way back, but she was pretty coy about these things. Why do you want to know? Monica was my friend, I cared about her. Dietrich shrugs. I don't know, I guess I just want to get to know her better. There were some areas of her life that have always been a mystery, and if you could shed any light on them, I'd be appreciative. Uh, well, I don't wanna, but he's obviously trying to bond, and, well, we have lost a comrade, and I don't really would want to hurt him, but I'm not gonna spoil her secrets anyway. So let's be nice, say no in a nice way. I knew Monica well enough to know what you mean, she did have a mysterious way about her. Oh. So, what was the deal between the two of you? Don't leave me in suspense. I don't know. Well, don't ask me, I just booted up this game. I say we were very close. That's so. Dietrich raises an eyebrow. Hmm, learn something new every day. Well, anyway, good on you both. Dietrich raises his bottle to you in salute. She was a wonderful woman and hoped that your time together was happy. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time and the bottle's almost empty. Thanks for taking your time to talk. For what it's worth, I'm happy you were. you're here with us. Dietrich takes a final pull on the bottle, then tips it forward, putting the rest on the ground. Rest in peace, Monica. We'll miss you, girl. Okay. So I guess it's a little bonding uh, can't hurt. We apparently have a dog. So yeah, from what I've heard, you have much more interaction with your crew members, with your party members in this game than you had in uh, the Dead Man Switch. As you start towards the Sefer's door, a large four-legged form steps around the corner. Dante, Monica's dog, an enormous mongol of indeterminate breed. A long whimper emerges as he enters the room, head hanging low. Oh shit, Dante. Dietrich shakes his head. Don't worry, boy, we'll look after you. At the sight of Monica's dog, Amsel's eyes well up. He inhales but can't quite catch his breath. He started whimpering about an hour ago. Turned into a full-blown hole. Wouldn't stop. Kept. He closes his eyes. That's when I realized something bad had happened. Looking down into those huge brown eyes, he sees intelligence and sadness. Lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. V 
We grab Monica's pack of soy jerky treats off the table and give him one. Dante takes the treat in his mouth, but it's clear he has no appetite for it and the jerky drops to the floor. He leans into you and looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your legs. I guess the dog is going with you, Anya. Amsel takes a ragged breath and releases it, then a slow, melancholy smile plays across his face. Well, perhaps a part of Monica lives on in Dante. Return to the safe house when you're finished with Altuk, meine Freundin. That's my friend. Well, that's actually a thing. In German, we have Freund and Freundin. Uh, because we actually differentiate between the male version of a friend and the female version of the friend. So you could say Freundin is girlfriend, but I think girlfriend more have actually does have some sort of sexual component so if if i introduce a girl as my girlfriend that would mean that well we are actually together while she could be my my friend and my female friend and i another girl would be my girlfriend so yeah so my friend with a little luck he can help us locate green winters and we can get to the bottom of this he stares at the floor and now I think we should all take a moment. His lips tighten for Monica. Okay, so apparently I now have a dog in my party. Oh really? Dante. He is <laughs> good at nothing. Well what did you expect? <laughs> Wait what? He has no inventory. He's a dog. <laughs> he could be a cyber dub dog, but he's not. And he doesn't have any skills of note. Just everything at one. Anyway, where is that unfriendly orc? Hey, oh, this apparently is my stash. It is. There's nothing here, okay. Let's talk to Iger. <coughs> Car is calm, my ass. Iger stares at you and you can taste the bile in her stare. She clearly still blames you for Monica's death. Something I can do for you, fearless leader? We need to talk about Monica. No, not right now, we don't. Don't push me on this, Anya. One of these days, we're gonna hash this out, and you can talk all you like about the clusterfuck that killed one of my best friends, but it won't be today. Fair enough, but before I go, I have something else to say. Spit it out then, let's hear it. You're wrong about me, Aga. I intend to prove that to you. She stares at you for a moment and looks away. Best of luck with that, Anya. Now please, leave me alone. And... Actually, there's no... I mean, she has calmed down now. Let's not push it. I mean... It, it was wrong for her to call me out in front of that, like... Uh, like that in front of the team, but... That is gone, and... Apparently, uh, the others still follow me, so... We let this one slide. Glory. Glory is beautiful in a wayfish sort of way. Her features are almost elvish in their delicacy, but there is something cold about her that you find unsettling. What's more unsettling is her chrome. Glory is rocking a heavy load out of cyberware. From head to toe, she looks to be composed more of plastic and metal than she's of skin and bone. In the shadows, individuals such, as, individuals such as this are anything but uncommon, but Glory is Cyberware's first generation, all of it. Bulky, invasive, practically museum's pieces. This chrome was obsolete well before she was born. Anya, Glory shifts her gaze to you, but her expression is as cold and placid as always. Can I help you? Hey, Glory, how are you holding up? Don't worry about me, I'm solid. You sure? 
You look like you're a million miles away. I'll be with you when it counts. Right now it doesn't. Any thoughts on what we should do next? Find our missing client. Extract some answers. Beyond that, find another dagger. Monica won't be easy to replace. Best start looking now. I have a question for you, Glory, of the personal kind. I'm not big on sharing sport personal reasons, you understand, I'm sure. The edge in her voice tells you that she's not interested in continuing this conversation. Of course, we all have our secrets, but if you ever want to talk, I'm here. Alrighty! I mean, I've just arrived here, no, n there's really no use in putting pressure. <laughs> no, for Mitarbeiter, that's employees only in German. Uh, there's no use in putting pressure on the people that are longer here. Have longer been here than I have. And I guess that's the exit. We will take that in the next video. So, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.